Hi, welcome to Team Woolly Sheep Reviews. Alright, so what I've done first, I had some plastic screws and I put some plastic screws with a locking nut through the frame to mount the board. And there's a little arrow in there showing where the front is. Now on this particular frame, the front is there. The motors are going to sit there. The ESCs are going to sit there. However, I've got wires on the motors and I've got wires on the ESCs. So what I'm going to do, you can either join the wires or I can desolder these and shorten the wires of the motor. Right, let's get something sorted. Is soldering is a fundamental part of building quadcopters. You have to have a reasonable level or ability to solder a soldering station. If you haven't got one, I suggest you go out and buy a tidy solder, soldering iron. Have a practice at soldering because if you can't solder, then you're going to get into difficulties with issues with speed controllers, joining to motors. So practice your soldering. If you're not confident at soldering, then I suggest you join the wires together, which is a lot easier than trying to solder direct to a PCB board. I don't know whether you're aware, but carbon is conductive. So think of this as a sheet of metal when you're building. If something touches this, then it's got a potential shorting out because it's like a metal. So with that in mind, you have to make sure that any electrical connections don't touch the carbon frame. Because if they touch a carbon frame, you could have a smoky day. All right, so you end up with your ESCs on the motor. So another th thing to mention at this time is, as you can see, I put some shrink uh, tubing on there. So I've cut the length of shrink tubing, which is plenty long enough to cover all the electrical connections. Because like I said, when it's sat on the frame, I do not want anything to short out there. What I tend to do is stick a nice because well, I've obviously cut them off on these, but I put a, a nice thick shrink tube in on there to actually protect it. So I can now mount the motors on there, like so, and get the ESCs in position ready. Some soft mounts, very thin soft mounts, just for protection, so I'm gonna put them on. So I'll have soft mounts on there, the ESCs there. As you can see, the motor base it's only about three or four millimeters thick before it, it goes through the metal work and then you're in the the area of the windings so you don't want screws going into the windings because if it, that happens then this motor will be in the bin so if you're using soft mounts or various thickness frames make sure the screws only protrude a couple of millimeters so you want about two or three turns and then you're in the motor winding. So what I generally do is put the motor, put the screw and then see how far through, when you squish it together, how far the screw comes. If the screw goes beyond the metalwork of the base, then the screw's too long. So either find shorter screws or grind a bit off. The idea of the soft, soft mounts is it gives a little bit of cushioning for the motor to stop vibrations from the motor traveling through the frame to the flight controller however this one has got the the little rubber little rubber grommets in set so if putting these on it will it, yeah it's just a little bit of help and it makes life a little bit nicer now the idea is is to tighten them up so that they're firm you're not tightening them up and getting any torque on them you're tightening them up so that they're firm and just, and that's about it. And what you need is a bit of Loctite to stop them and threading themselves. All right, you should end up with something like this. So you've got the ESCs ready to be stuck on there. 
and the motor's in position. Now one thing to be mindful of, if you've bought a set of motors, you may have noticed that some come with perhaps silver or if you bought a set of four, they'll come in clockwise and anti-clockwise. What you need to know is which ones are clockwise and anti-clockwise and, and when I say clockwise as in if this is a right hand thread so it's right to tight and you find it then you've got a pair of motors which has got a left hand thread so it's left to tight to tighten so you know you tighten that way is if this is the front of the quad then this front right will be a right hand thread that would be clockwise, conventional, tightening up in a clockwise, righty tighty and lefty loosey. Hmm. And this one will be the reverse thread on the opposite corners. So these pair will be reverse thread, these pair will be conventional thread, and that's with this being in the, in the front. Now on certain motors they show you a direction arrow. This particular motor has got the direction arrow showing that it rotates that way. So as you can see, if it's rotating that way and you have a blade strike, because that's tightening, if it strikes there and the motor's going that way, it actually tightens rather than slackens. Some people like to buy all conventional, put them all the way around, exactly the same motor on four corners. That's fine, as long as you put locking nuts in there and you keep them tight and check them. This particular set I've got, is that is a uh, a left hand thread and that is a conventional right thread. So conventional right threads in the corner and uh, uh, reverse threads in these two corners here. That being the front of course. You will notice that the standard configuration for flight controller boards of this for quadcopters would be this bottom right corner would be motor one, two, three, four. Conveniently, they are marked S1, S2, S3, and S4. So they are actually marked that way. Now the signal wire on these ESCs is always the colored wire. In this case, it's white. If you have black and orange, then the orange will be the signal wire. If you've got black and yellow, the yellow will be the signal wire. Black is always ground or neutral or negative connection shouldn't say neutral so the black is the negative and the white is the signal wire so you will see G and S1 the G will be ground or negative and S1 will be signal wire so you quite simply solder these wires to these positions here so it's a case now of preparing these wires and putting the positive on the positive pins and the negative on the negative pins and that is very important so for god's sake pay particular attention to they may naturally fall the black on the right but they may not so double check what is actually printed on the board and for god's sake don't mess this up because that is crucial if they're the wrong way around you will have a kaboom now i'm going to take this board off before I start is because I need to have a battery connection so I need to solder this onto the board this side is the positive that side is the negative if you look very careful you can see that it's printed actually on the board so step one was to solder the battery connections which I've done so there and what you'll notice is a little copper component in the center and under no circumstances get any solder on there so make sure that the positive is a, a perfect gap between the positive connection and that copper contact and the same with the negative so look with a, a set of eyepieces get one of these which is called a loop and you can see and you can see that there's no connection between the positive and that copper St step two 
it refers to if you're using any 5 volt accessory other than receiver solder power and ground to the wires here so if you wanted to use that 5 volt supply there's a 5 volt supply there so if say you wanted to run some LEDs like let's not go too mad with LEDs you know but if you wanted to run something off there you could do it and here it says on the bottom of the board if you're using a spectrum satellite receiver you'll probably require 3.3 volts uh, on the input now on the other side of the board you've got connections for your receiver so there is some connections to your receiver however it's marked as a 5 stroke 3 volt 3.3 so what it's saying to do is if you look at the very carefully on that board you will see a center pin there's three pins 5 volts on one side 3.3 volts the other side and it's saying to bridge out the one pair of pins if you want 5 volts if you've got it if you're using free, uh, FR Sky then you want 5 volts if you're using a spectrum um, a spectrum satellite arrangement then you want 3.3 volts but conventionally if you, most receivers you're looking for 5 volts so in which case then we need to put a little blob of solder to blob the center one and the 5 volt I shall do that now solder the 5 volt solder the center one and then put the, uh, in between and put a little ball of solder to bridge the pair of them you will see that I've created a little blob of solder I'll shorten out effectively shorten out the 5 and the center pin so that will now give me 5 volts to this side of the board so like I said check your solder connections so I can now mount it onto my frame and you'll notice because this is I'm, I'm keeping this quite low I put some rubber pad on the bottom to act as a protector so when I put this in place like so my solder joints are nowhere near the carbon board so double check because you don't want that short in on there because it'll go off like a firework right obviously depending on what frame you were using is where this go you might want longer leads and have the frame if you've got a battery connection at the top you might want to extend the red and black and have them uh, a bit longer you can buy silicone wire like this and then you can extend your your, your battery connectors wherever you need them to be on this board it comes out the back there and now we're at a point to solder in all the ESCs and this is where it's time to take your time and make sure the positives are on the positives for God's sake don't get it wrong they're shown they are printed positive and negative on the board so take your time do one at a time and solder all the, the cables where they're supposed to be so you should be in this position we've now got all the ESCs positives and negatives soldered in the right places so at this point you think you're finished check every pos neg is in the right place so there's a pos going to the pos and they're going to the neg i know it uh, sounds a little bit intense so you must check 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 but you'll find there'll be lots of times you solder something and then when you go back and have a look you realize oops i made a mistake so it's better to do that before the magic smoke so all we've got left to do now is the signal wires and the ground so once again i'm going to cut these to length and solder them onto the onto the pins marked g and s for the each motor so like i said never strap the wires really tight allow a little bit of slack so dress them up neatly into position so you don't want loads of cable hanging about but what you don't want is cables under tension because vibrations will cause these cables to start to free and snap so you now should be in a situation like this i've spent the time now to double check that the s is the colored wire and the g is the black wires i've once again checked all my connections it's good time to check for any solder splashes or anything on the, any of the components 
because you do get sometimes a wire will flick and a little ball of solder will appear somewhere on the circuit board so check double check make sure that everything is clean and everything is neat thank you for watching team woolly sheep reviews i hope you enjoyed this video and had as much fun as i did catch you soon bye so and i have soldered it the wrong way around you're gonna be f***ing joking <laughs>